cemeteries can be good. Yeah. That's my emphasis, by the way. God has appointed teachers in the church, mm-hmm. but not all teachers are appointed by God. Right. Yes. I was saying to Mark, you know, they were talking about somebody, a big famous preacher, and I said, well, if you hear people start to talk about him, because generally if they get on the subject, they'll talk about him, they won't talk about God. Mm-hmm. And I was just saying, how did you test them? Right. How do you test them? If you start talking to me about somebody and you go on and on about a, a, a pastor, a teacher, I may say to you, how did you test them? Because the word of God says, First John, John wrote, First John 4, mm-hmm. he said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So you've got to test these things. How many times have I said that here during this series? Don't don't take my word for it. Test me. Don't trust me. Test me. Check on what I say. Scripture interprets Scripture. And there is a warning. You know, God spoke to, through James, James 3, 1, and said, Let not many of you become teachers. Mm-hmm. My brethren, knowing that as such, we will incur a stricter judgment. Today, it's like anybody that has Facebook. All of a sudden, they're teachers. They're prophets. They're apostles. Be very, very prayerful. Very, very prayerful, because remember, you can incur a stricter judgment. We are to be like the Bereans in the book of Acts. You know, it talks about Paul when he was traveling and uh, on his way, before he got to Corinth, to go over to Greece and Athens. He says, now these were more noble-minded, these being the Bereans, were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica. For they received the word with great eagerness examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Acts 17, 11. Mm. If you hear something, examine the scriptures. See if it's so. Right. Don't take it, right? right? Commentaries can be good, but they don't replace the word of God. They don't become more important than the word of God, which I see happening all the time. And that's what happened in the, in the Jewish religion. The Talmud. The Talmud is not the Bible. Yeah. Okay, it's not or the Torah. These are, that's the Bible, so that's scripture. The Talmud is commentary, all right? The, the, the Talmud, which is commentaries, contain the teachings and opinions of thousands of rabbis dating from before the birth of Christ through the fifth century after the birth of Christ on a variety of subjects, including the law, Jewish ethics, philosophy, customs, history, law, and many other topics. The Talmud is the basis. It has, has become the basis for all codes of Jewish law. In other words, what has happened is what a rabbi says about the scripture has become more important than the scripture itself. And you want to know something? I see that happening in Christianity. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Alice and I have been blessed. And I mean, even Mark has traveled with us in many places. You know, I go places and I start talking to people about Jesus. And I'll say, well, the word says, the word says. And they'll say, well, this guy says, and this guy says, oh, wait a minute. It's, it's good that there are teachers anointed and appointed by God out there, but make sure that it doesn't start to replace the word of God in your life, all right? Traditions is the other thing. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus said, that he's talking to the Pharisees and scribes, and they were accusing him. They were saying, you know, why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of elders? Because they were walking through on the Sabbath and, and eating. They hadn't washed their hands, right? Mm-hmm. And Jesus said... This is Matthew 7, verse 6. He I said, said I'm, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, what did I just say? Matthew. No, it is Mark. Thank you, my sweet. Okay. And he said to them, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, far away from me. But in vain do they teach, in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. He was also saying to them, you are experts at setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. The true danger arises when the tradition of men supplants the commandment of God. Now, obviously, in Jesus' statement that I just read, Mm -hmm. the traditions were not in line with the commandments. Ergo, every tradition should be tested according to the word, tested against the word. 
If the tradition conflicts with the word or is not supported by the word, it should not be a part of our lives. How did it ever get there in the first place? Because it's pleasant. It tickles yeah. the ears. And you keep hearing it and hearing it. Or it serves the purpose of somebody to bring something in to you that's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to think this is simple and logical. I love this. You, and you all probably know this. Psalm 23. David wrote, He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's verse 3 in Psalm 23. Right? God leads us. How does he lead us? Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. The Spirit of God quickens the word to us. All right? And that's how God leads us, is with his word. So what happens when you put the word aside? You are in trouble. You're in grave danger. Let my eyes read your word. Let my ears hear your voice. Let my body be your temple. Let my tongue be your sword. Let my eyes read your word. Let my ears hear your voice. Let my body be your temple. Let my tongue be your soul. From Genesis to Revelation. 